In this tutorial, I'll tell you about the YAML format when it comes to configuring your Spring Boot applications. We've looked at property files as one way to save your configuration. You can put your configuration values in a property file, but there is a better approach. And I think you will like this better than the property file, so check this out. All right, so what is the YAML format? YAML stands for, well, it used to stand for yet another markup language, but then they changed it to YAML ain't markup language. So whether it's a markup language or not, well, you decide, but for now, we're just gonna go with the name YAML, whatever it means. Uh, it's basically a language to store data elements. Okay, so data elements like configuration, you wanna store values, you can save it in a YAML file. Now, what does a YAML file look like? Let me actually show you by creating a YAML file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this application.properties file. So what we have is a dot properties, and we know what the property syntax looks like. It's property name equals value. Okay, this is what we've been using all along. Now, I'm going to rename this to a YAML file using the YAML extension. So I'm gonna go right click, refactor, rename and I'm gonna call this application.yml, okay? YML is the YAML extension. Now, if you do this, then you cannot do the equals anymore. YAML has a syntax of key colon value, okay? So I'm gonna replace this equals throughout this file with the colon symbol, the colon and a space, okay? So I'm gonna replace all, and now I have kind of converted this to a YAML format, kind of, because there are a couple of things that you need to care about. Well, we'll take a look at that. YAML has support for various different data types, okay? So you have uh, strings, you have integers. So you see here, line number nine, db.port equals 1200. It knows that it's a number, okay? Text by default is treated as string. Now I can put quotes over here to say, okay, this is a string, but it's not required. If the value is a string, YAML automatically assumes that it's a string and you don't have to do anything with it. You don't have to put quotes there. However, there are a couple of values that I see here which break the YAML format that we have to address. First is this star over here, which doesn't make sense. And this value over here, which is also colon and values, which will confuse the YAML interpreter, so I'm gonna to have to put quotes over there to let this know that this is a string and it's not a start of another key, or it's not the star has a separate meaning in the YAML format. I won't, don't want it to apply that meaning, so I'm gonna put quotes there. But apart from these two, the rest are just good to go, okay? Now, this is not really the true benefit of YAML. The true benefit of YAML is in its nesting structure. You remember I told you how you have a lot of keys, especially when dealing with Spring, which has like blah, dot, blah, dot, blah, dot, blah, and it goes on and on and on, right? And a lot of times, the first few blah, dot, blah, dot, blahs are the same. So you have to basically repeat the whole thing. So for example, take a look at this guy. Management endpoints, web exposure include. I'm sure there would be some management endpoints, web exposure, something else. Management endpoints, web exposure, some other thing. So you're basically typing that whole thing multiple times. This is where YAML helps you. So YAML supports this concept of nesting. Let me show you how that works. So you basically take something like this. So let's say you have um, this particular thing, right? App.name, app.description. App is common. So I can basically take that common thing out, put a colon there, and indent the rest to make it appear below app, okay? So basically I have app at the top level, and then I have indented name, which basically says this is this belongs to app, right? So this is treated as app.name, and I have indented description, so it's treated as app.description, okay? Now with this, you basically have avoided repeating app multiple times. Well, app is just three letters, not saving a lot, but you can easily imagine this removing all the duplicacy when it comes to these keys, okay? Let me actually do this for um, the other stuff as well. So I'm gonna take my over here, and then I'm gonna do my colon, and then I'm gonna put greeting in the next line, indent, and then list.values, well, I'm gonna take this, 
values goes to a new line and then well, there you go it's a little more compact i can do the same thing for db okay db connection db colon of course host also indented port also indented now for the last one i'm not going to do this i don't have to right there's not a lot of stuff that is following this there's no management endpoints web blah blah right if there is something i can indent it but now here it seems like with just one property indenting seems to be a little bit of a pain so i'm not going to do it this works fine too this is you know spring boot picks it up right so this works exactly the same as with property files you don't have to indent but if you have the benefit of indenting, you can. Some companies have this kind of like a coding standard where you have to indent everything, in which case you don't have a choice, you have to indent this thing. But in this case, I don't see a lot of benefit to indenting, just putting it in one key makes more sense. So I'm gonna leave it as is. One thing to note though, indenting has to be spaces, it cannot be tabs, because of the way the YAML syntax has been defined. With tabs, it's a little tricky. You don't know if it's one tab, what's the number of spaces for tab is. That can be configured and all that stuff. So avoid tabs. Tabs are not gonna work. Use spaces. You can do one space indents. You can do multiple space indents. It's up to you. But basically have a consistent indent format. And there you go. This is YAML format. This is super convenient. And since you have the flexibility of doing this or that, I'm gonna stick with this for most of this course, I might switch back to properties because I'm a force of habit. I used to use properties a lot and recently I've switched to YAML. So I might switch to properties at some odd place, but for the most of the rest of the course, I will I'll try to use YAML as much as possible because it's neater, it looks nice and I like it. Okay, so we have looked at externalizing our configuration with property files and YAML files, but the next step that we should look at in our journey to configuring our microservices is environment-based configuration. Right now, we have externalized it, but all environments use the same values. Now, how can I make it environment-specific? Let's take a look at that in the next tutorial where we talk about Spring Profiles.